Good morning, everyone. We're just going to give it a five more minutes for everybody to get on. It's good to see you on this rainy Friday afternoon. At least it's not Friday the 13th. <laughs> Actually, Friday the 13th is a lucky day. <laughs> Well, it's a good long weekend, right? It's President's Day weekend. Yeah. And you have a few more days to recover from your Valentine's Day celebration. <laughs> yes, and schools get an extra long weekend. My daughters are off today. <laughs> oh, really? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Felicia. Good morning. You're just going to give it three more minutes and then we'll get started. I'm glad you're all here. It's wonderful information and you're all going to love what you're going to hear. <laughs> we're good at finding money right Roderick that's we right get through uh PPP all through COVID right we got all that information out to everybody for the employee tax credits and then where to go for PPP and don't forget idle oh I can't forget idle <laughs> right? then for a brief second the restaurant rescue fund that's right yep very brief, right? <laughs> ran out in two days. Uh, ran out of money very fast. Yeah. So this is this is good news for for uh, women, women-owned businesses. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to get started because it's already 11:03, and I want to respect everybody's time. So let me welcome you to uh, our webinar today. It's brought to you by uh, Roderick Johnson, who's a business opportunity specialist with the Office of Government Contracting and Business Development. He specializes in women-owned small businesses, the federal contracting program, and U.S. Small Business Administration. And also, um, after Roderick's presentation, um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Danette Wynn from the Maryland Women Business Center, and she's going to have a brief presentation, and then we are going to open it up for questions and answers, okay? So if you have any questions as we go, please put them in the chat. We are recording this webinar, so uh, I'm going to turn it right over to you, Roderick. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Raj Johnson. I am a business opportunity specialist with the Office of Government Contracting and Business Development at the SBA headquarters in Washington, DC. Now, I'll give you a little bit about, about my background. Actually, I spent about 32 years in corporate, middle market, and small business lending, um, all here in the DMV. And then I moved over to the SBA. Um, and actually, this is my fourth role um, in five years at the SBA. And I'm so happy to be here with you guys this morning to actually give you an overview of the woman-owned small business program and the economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business program. All right, so let's go to the next slide, please. And so what you're gonna see on the next slide are six pieces of information, right? That's going to help you prepare, right? To submit an application to the SBA so that you can be certified. Now, what you see here, wosby.certify.sba.gov, please write that down or burn it into your brain because that, that is going to be very important to you throughout the process, okay? So on the homepage, once it comes up, then you're gonna have access to checklists that provide guidance prior to you applying. You're gonna be able to verify your eligibility. Um, and let me talk about that for just a second. All right, so the, so, so the eligibility, 51% of the company has to be female owned, okay? You have to be a US citizen. Those two are easy. And then 
the one the firm has to be managed and controlled by a female. There are no financial statements required for the woman-owned small business certification. So you all meet that criteria. All right. Then on the Wolseby page, you're going to find answers to questions regarding your firm's ability to participate in the program. Well, I gave you the three qualifiers. So you pretty much are going to qualify for the program. You're able to request information from the SBA via, via the help form. So there is a help form in the wasbcertified.sba.gov. You're gonna be able to create an account and proceed with your application. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then you can access the wasbcertified.sba. Now the knowledge base, there's a tab, you see it right here. The knowledge base includes training videos and user guides and all sorts of good information that you'll need so that when you're ready, and you can go ahead to the next slide. So when you're ready to go, then you're gonna do this. You're gonna hit the prepare button, okay? And what you'll find there is the checklist to guide you through the process and information on the documents you'll need as you'll begin. So I'll go ahead and give you the answer to the test, all right? So stay there a minute. Well, go back. All right, stay there, right there. Okay, so what are the documents? The articles, bylaws, the certificate of good standing, your operating agreement, okay? Your resume, that's important, all right? We're not looking for a capability statement. We're not looking for a bio, it's your resume. So those are, the, those are the documents that you're going to need, all right, and have at your side ready to upload into the system. All right, so next slide, please. So the next slide should talk about the process. There you are. All right. So, yeah, I was going to say. So we have the four, the, the four steps, right, the submission, the screening stage, processing stage, and then our director, Alyssa Sheard, you know, will sign the letter saying that you are now Wozby certified, okay? But before we get there, and we want all of you to get there. All right, so here's the first important step. Now, if you're not, then you're gonna register in SAM.gov, okay? And the SAM account must be active. So if you've registered, you need to go in and check to see if your account is actually active. And really it's a good practice to do that every 12 months, right? To make sure that you're active. Okay, then the company registers and remember I told you to keep this handy, wosb.certified.sba.gov and claim your business. So you'll go in, you've put your business's name and all is in SAM and now you'll go into Wosby and, and your company name and all should show up, all right? Then your firm completes the application on wosb.certified.sba.gov and upload the appropriate documents for the Wozby or Ed Wozby. Now we're gonna talk about Ed Wozby in, in, in a couple of minutes, okay? The qualifications for that. All right, so that's the submission. Now we'll move over to the screening phase. So we have screeners, okay, where they receive the submission and verifies the receipt of all the documents. Actually, I'm one of those guys, okay? I'm a screener. All right, then you know, notify the firm of a complete application. Now, if there's missing information, and, and I'll talk about what's invalid information in, in about three or four minutes, okay? But if there's missing information, I'll issue a deficiency letter or what we call an RFI, a request for information. And typically, you'll have five to seven days to respond to that RFI. If you don't respond in within the five to seven days, the file is closed and then you're gonna to have to start all over again, okay? So when you get that RFI, please pay attention to when you have to submit it by. All right, so now we move to the processing phase now that we have a complete application. So we review the eligibility, the ownership and control. Now here's what's key. The 90 day process begins with a complete application, not when the application is submitted. Because I get a lot of um, emails, well, you told us 90 days, but yes, 90 days from a complete application, not 90 days 
when you push the button to submit it, okay? Now, we review the financial information for the Ed Wosby, and I'll talk about that in a minute because that's part of what you have to do to become Ed Wosby certified. Okay, I may re, you know, conduct a request for more information. Then the final recommendation is submitted or recommended, I should say. And then you're listed in the database system where the contracting officers can go in and see your company, all right? So that's the processing phase. Then we move over to the director decision and she, yes, she will make the final decision to approve or deny. A letter is issued and signed and dated to you guys. And then that marks the official date of entry into the Wosby program. So you don't really get a certificate. That letter, if you will, is, the, is your license. That's your physical, tangible piece of evidence that you're in the program. But you'll move from pending where you were in the processing phase to now accept it in the database system. All right, so your firm will show up. If a con when the contracting officer goes and looks for your company, okay? So next slide, please. All right, so as you see, um, you have Wolsby and Ed Wolsby. Now, from a strategic standpoint, right, for these set-aside contracts, let's look at this. So there's going to be less competition for the Ed Wolsby set-asides than there is for the Wosbys, right? You're gonna be competing against more, you know, women-owned business for the Wosby contract, okay? And so as it says here, the Wos Ed Wosby is a subset of Wosby. As such, if you qualify as an Ed Wosby, you automatically qualify as a Wosby. Now, um, this is Rod's opinion. This is not the SBA's official position. So Rod says, I would just qualify for, I would just apply for the Ed Wosby, right? Because if you, if, if you qualify for that, then you're gonna automatically qualify for the Wosby, okay? And we'll give you the criteria for the Ed Wosby, and it's simple. All right, so the industry specific dates code for Wosby and Ed Wosby are listed um, in this URL, okay? SBA.gov forward slash document support qualify NAICS. Okay. And all the NAICS codes for the Wosby and Ed Wosby will come up for you. And hopefully your business is in one of those NAICS codes. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right. So is the Wosby certification appropriate for you? Well, I'm telling you here and now, yes. Okay. Because there's you have women or you have 51% ownership. You manage the daily operations of the business. There, it, unlike the 8A program, because some of you may be 8A certified and there's a minimum time requirement that you must be in business two years. But with this program, you don't have a minimum time in business, okay? Your company falls within the proper NAICS codes and you're the highest office position and you have managerial experience, which will show up on your resume. All right, next next slide, please. And later we'll get into the top three reasons why your application slows down, okay, or is rejected. But now we're gonna talk about the Ed Wosby qualifications, which I think the majority of women will qualify for Ed Wosby. And that is the personal net worth is less than 850,000. I'll go a little more granular than that. Okay, so you get to back out your government TSP, your 401k, your 403b, your Roth, all those um, assets that you have in retirement accounts, you get to back that out, okay? Two, three, your average income of 400,000 or less. And then three, fair market value of all assets is 6.5 million or less, okay? So I would think that a lot of women-owned businesses meet the criteria for the economically disadvantaged women-owned small business. So now you understand why I say, I just think it's just better to go for the Ed Wosby 
and you'll automatically become Woes B certified, okay? All right, next slide, please. All right, so here are your three steps to remember. So you got your SAM.gov profile active, okay? Now, as the majority owner, you have to initiate the application. Okay, you can't have you can't have anybody else do it. You can't have your boyfriend or a significant other, okay, initiate the application. You have to do that, okay? You have to review the list of required documents under the prepare tab, but I've given them to you, but you have this prepare tab on woesby.certified.sba.gov to go to, right, to tell you what the documents are that you need to submit, all right? Next slide, please. Now, I will say, yeah. So what I will say is what I'm hearing is, oh, the process takes a long time. Well, when I then kind of dig in and I say, well, did you have all the documents ready to go so that you could go ahead and upload them in the system? Then I get no, all right? So please have all your documents right there, ready to go. And it will take you no time to get those documents uploaded and into the system over for us to actually um, to review and move, move you through each phase of the four phases that I just talked about a minute ago. All right, so getting started. So again, you're gonna register in the SAM system, right? So your firm must have an active SAM registration. Ensure your firm has been accurately updated the last 12 months, okay? And your SAM.gov registration should be set for the purposes of all awards, not limited to loans and grants. You're gonna create your SBA account, right? So you're gonna to need to go into login.gov accounts to use the Wosby.certify. And be sure to enter the same email address into your SBA Connect profile, okay? Now, when you list someone as a delegate, because you can't have a delegate, in SBA Connect, you will be asked to provide an email address for them. Well, make sure it's the same email address that you put in the system. And you must enter the firm owner's legal name into the SBA Connect file. See, that's the other thing. This is the other thing that slows down the process. So your name is Elizabeth, but you put in Beth or you put in Lizzie. No, it's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montgomery. Okay, not Elizabeth or not Lizzie. Okay, you got to put in your full legal name into the SBA Connect profile. All right, so now you're going to go in and you're going to claim your business at the Wosby dot certify, right? Because all these systems talk to each other. All right, so you'll be asked to enter your firms either UEI, EIN, or MPIN from SAM, right? Those things are generated in SAM.gov to claim your business and begin your Wosby federal contract program application. Because now you're ready, you have all your documents there. All right. The majority women business owner or other designated woman business owner must claim the business, okay? So that's important. When creating your SBA Connect account, individual contributors must use the same email address that was used by the primary owner to claim the business in SAM. So you may have a delegate or, an, or a contributor as they're calling it. All right, just make sure that they use the same email address. All right, next slide, please. So here are the common reasons. Remember a couple of minutes ago, I said there are three common, three or four common reasons for return of an application or request for more information. Missing the, the articles of incorporation. And remember at the top of that, at the top of the presentation, I said articles by law, certificate of good standing, operating agreement, okay? But having said that, the articles of incorporation still need are still the number one reason why the application gets returned. So in this slide, in this, let's not have that, okay? Let's not have that. The second reason, the governing documents are not properly executed, okay? So if you have an operating agreement for your LLC, just ensure that the document is signed and dated by all members at the time the document is submitted. If you have a C corporation 
please submit the bylaws, right? Or a copy of the minutes of the meeting during which the bylaws were adopted. So each of these documents must be signed by the relevant parties and dated, typically the officers of the company, right? All right, and then an incomplete resume. Now this one's shocking to me because most of us at some point in time have done a resume. But guess what the number one, and, and it is the one, the one, number one bullet point. The name is not on the resume. Okay, the name, is, your name is not on the resume. All right, then number two, the work history. Well, please include your, your applicant firm in chronological order that includes the start and end date, including the present date where applicable. Then we see resumes where there's no title or positions or what you even did, okay? So please put that in or you'll be receiving an RFI and it slows down your you know, your application for being um, approved. And then education and licenses, that's important. If you're a cosmetologist and you have a license, you had to get licensed to be a cosmetologist, okay? So we need to know your education and your licenses. If you're a CPA, you know, we, you know, we need to know that you hopefully um, have an undergraduate in, in accounting and maybe a master's degree in tax, well, we need to know that, all right? And so those are the three things that are very important. Now, if you have outside employment, because this comes up a lot, or ownership, please include a letter of explanation to include the business hours of the applicant firm, the days of the week and hours of the day dedicated to your firm and the days of the week and hours of the day dedicated to the outside employment or ownership, okay? So this is one thing, and, and it's kind of nuts, but this is one thing that we saw. So a person says that they work for McDonald's from eight to five, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. They've purchased a McDonald's franchise and they're saying that they work eight to five in their own franchise. Well, no. You can't be at two places at the same time, right? So if you worked at McDonald's, right, you're still employed at McDonald's and you're a manager at McDonald's, okay, in Fairfax, and you work eight to five, okay, that's fine. But then you may go to your franchise, your franchise McDonald's, okay, and you may be Mondo's McDonald's, let's just say it's a 24-hour McDonald's and the drive through is the only thing that's open. Okay, so you may... You might work at that McDonald's from, let's just say, 6 p.m. Um, I don't know when you want to sleep, but we'll, we'll just say from 6, 6 p.m. to maybe 3 or 4 a.m., okay? Well, we need to know specifically with outside employment how much time you're actually putting in at your business and how much time you're dedicating to, I'll call it your 9 to 5 job, all right? We, see, we will kick it back if we think that you're not you know, really managing your business, okay? All right, next slide, please. So here is help, okay? You have help. And these are the four, okay? These are the four third-party certifiers, all right? Now, we're gonna hear from the Women's Business Center and actually refer um, women over to the Women Business Center to get assistance because some, you know, sometimes you need assistance pulling documents together and everything. But here are the SB approved third party certifiers. And I'm circling and underlying the word certifiers. Okay. So you have the El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the National Women Business Owners Corporation, the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, and the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. Okay, so those are your third party certifiers. All right, next slide, please. So there are all sorts of training resources for you all out there. Um, so you have your document preparation checklist for, for Wosby and Ed Wosby. You have your eligibility check questionnaire. And remember at the top, I said, burn into your brain or or write it down, wosby.certified.sba.gov. 
that's where you find all these training resources and material, okay? So in the knowledge base, use that knowledge base, right? You have a training video, you have an apply and submit training video and sketch down one more. I think there's one more. Um, yeah, and then the applicant user guide, okay? So use the resources, go ahead to the next slide, please. Use the resources that are out there that we have for you. Now, we list here three um, addresses or URLs. So you have sba.gov, Wolves Be Ready. The one that reaches us or, or someone like me is Wosby Training at sba.gov. And typically we'll answer whatever question you have within 48 hours. Um, yeah, 48, 72 hours around there, okay? Because since it's a national um, program, we're getting you know, questions constantly, all right? So it, it give us a couple of days and we'll, we'll come back to you. And for a technical help request for beta.certified.sbi.gov, that can be submitted via the help tab at the Wolsby Certify SBA.gov. All right, so that's all I have for you. And I think, um, oh, the helpful hints. Excuse me. I guess this one is important. All right. And it actually it is. Please monitor your emails, because remember I was talking about requests for information? Yeah, please monitor your emails so as not to miss important deadlines, updates, or requests from the Wosby team. Upload When uploading your documents, please only upload PDFs, and please ensure that they're not password protected, okay? Because we get a lot of password protected PDFs. Make sure they're not password protected, okay? Please note that our average processing time from receipt of application to rendering a decision is 121 days. I can tell you it doesn't really have to take that long if you've prepared at the beginning, right? And you have all the documents right there and you're ready to go, then it won't take 121 days. Usually what's included is that 121 days is the back and forth and answering the RFIs, okay? And that's why it takes so long. Now. If you don't hear from us in 30 to 45 days, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that there's an issue with your application, okay? We may have gotten a ton of applications, you know, over the weekend. And so now we have to sort through, sort through those and, um, you know, make it make, and process them and, and make a decision. Now, I think I said it earlier. So we might send your request for information you, and I think I said you will, and you'll have five to seven days to respond and make sure to note that due date bolded in the letter, okay? So please make sure you, you recognize that date so that you can get the requested information in and we can continue to process the application, okay? And so that's it. And so Marjo, we're gonna go right into the Women's Business Center. Yes, we are. So thank you very much for that information. And now let me introduce you to Danette Wynn. She was appointed Managing Director of the Maryland Women Business Center, effective November 2022. In her new role as Managing Director, Danette is looking forward to empowering women entrepreneurs as they start, grow, and expand their business in Maryland's capital region. So over to you, Danette, and thank you for sponsoring this webinar for us today. Thank you, Marjorie, for that great introduction. And it's a pleasure to meet each and every one of you on this um, call today. I am going to go ahead and send a message in the chat to everyone. That is my email address, as well as our website, um, in case you would like to get in contact with me and or explore more after um, our presentation today. Um, just to give you a little bit of uh, background on myself, uh, I started my first business when I took uh, a gap year in college uh, where I sold personalized gifts in the mall and decided that I needed to go back and get my education uh, because it was really tough to be able to scale my business at that time. 
Um, from there, I decided, you know, I really love economic development and I pursued economic development and, uh, I, and with economic development, I really looked at the small business community and grants to help the small business community and most recently worked in Fairfax City where I was the deputy director of economic development. Uh, the Maryland Women's Business Center is a program of the Rockville Economic Development Incorporated and is a collection of resources with a focus on women, inspiring, uh, inspiring entrepreneurs, and current business owner in Maryland's capital region. I actually have a presentation. I should probably put that up. Give me one second. I apologize. Can everyone see that? Yes. Wonderful. Um, we strive to provide access and equitable opportunities to women, entrepreneurs, and underserved populations in Maryland that seek to launch and grow their business. See if it will turn the page for me. There we go. So that's what I just spoke about. Our mission and vision is some of you might say, well, why a women's business summer? Well, women often start businesses different from men. We run them differently, we learn differently, and we participate more actively among other women. That is why our mission is to empower small businesses and women entrepreneurs to launch and grow in the Maryland capital region for long-term growth. Um, we seek to level the playing field for women entrepreneurs who still face unique obstacles and position Maryland as a recognized leader for growing and launching successful and innovative women-owned business. And we do that through our key values, which include collaboration, um, empowerment, expertise, inclusivity, and innovation. Now, annually, we help more than 1,500 women gain the skills, connections, and confidence necessary to navigate entrepreneurship. And we do this through the operation of three locations to include Montgomery County, Frederick County, um, and the Bowie State University, uh, which encompasses not only the university community, but also Prince George's County and the city of Bowie. I did forget to mention that within our Montgomery County office, we also service the city of Rockville. At each of these training um, centers, uh, what you'll find is our trained business and professional consultants that provide guidance on a variety of topics. So here is our team. Our team includes some of the most highly experienced and knowledgeable knowledgeable professionals, and it's compri comprised of business professionals that have the tools, the knowledge, tenure, and network to help you achieve your business goals. Additionally, I want to call out that our services are free and confidential. So what are some of the services you may say that we provide? Uh, we provide business assessment and consulting. Uh, we offer both one-on-one -on -one and group counseling on a variety of topics to include business plan development, market research strategy, strategies, licensing and permitting information. Um, along with our in-office counseling services, the Maryland Women's Business Center also offers clients the ability to receive assistance via online or real-time chat if that's more, um, uh, uh, as that fits your calendar uh, more appropriately. We also do a number of networking opportunities. Our networking opportunities are designed to not only expand your network, but also encourage community building. Um, workshops and training. So we provide a, a variety of workshops and courses that are covered towards aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners on topics such as starting a business, branding, local procure and local procurement, just to name a few. Oh, my battery is running low, I apologize. I'm not sure why that came on. Let me see if I can connect a little bit more. Um, and then finally, access to capital. We help identify how and when to access the right amount of financing for your business. We, we are connected to economic development agencies and tapped into local grant opportunities, such as the Verizon Business Digital Ready Program. And I've included a, a QR code there if you want to scan that. And this program offers free resources and tech tools to power your business in the digital age. And there's also a grant opportunity for small businesses valued at $10,000. Um, you do have to complete a number of trainings, but I wanted to make sure that you had that information available to you, and that's just one of the resources that we have. And finally, we have specialized programs, including our Shop Local Retail Incubator and our Child Incubator, uh, which create a launch pad for startup and early stage businesses as they grow and brand their customer base. And then here we have a Connect With Us. This QR code here goes directly to our website. We encourage you to follow us at Maryland WBC on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And that phone number is our main line there. Um, but as I said, I included my 
information in the chat, so please do feel free to contact me directly as well. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and take any questions. All right. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, can I have your slide deck so I can uh, send this out to everyone? Rod, do you mind if I send your slide deck out as well? You can send it out. Okay, thank you. So everyone on this call, I will send you both slide decks, okay? Um, so if you have any questions, can you either put it in the chat or raise your hand? And now's your chance to get all your questions answered. I have one question, Rod. Mm -hmm. So say I get certified. Um, the how do you say it? Ed Wolbsby. Ed Wolbsby. Uh huh. Wolbsby. Um, so say I get certified. What does that mean to me then? If I get certified, what benefit is that for me? All right. So as the whole idea is, there's set of you know each agency has set aside contracts for I'll call it all the alphabets, right? Wosby, Ed Wosby, 8A, veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned, right? So what it does is it actually gives you a leg up on the contracts that those particular agencies have for those particular designations. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you have the Ed Wosby certification, then you're competing in a much smaller pool, right, than you are in the Wosby pool. So that's that's really what the, the difference in having these different certifications mean to you because it, it, it just gives you a leg up. Is it for all businesses or is there a certain type of business that, that really can take advantage of this? Well, your business has to be in, you know, the certain NAICS codes. Now we know that information, I'll use that information technology is a big one, right? So if you have the information technology code and you're doing your female owned, what well, we use the right now, acronym, woman owned business, and you specialize in enterprise architecture and they have set aside an enterprise architecture contract for an economically disadvantaged woman, then you get to actually um, bid on that piece of business. All right. So that's that's the difference versus the masses and masses of companies that are out there that do enterprise architecture. Okay. Felicia, you had a question? Uh, yes. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> um, so, so in regards to the next codes, um, is there a site where you can verify if you qualify under the Ed um, Walsby site? And it's it's actually in the slides. That one I haven't burned into my, you know, into my memory yet, but it is okay. in the slide. Okay, I'll take a see. look at that. And the other yep. question I had was, um, right now I'm in the processing stage of uh, the woman business own uh, sort of SOB. Yes. SOB. Uh huh. So should I be waiting to do the Ed Wolsby now that I understand that a little bit better? For that process to complete and then go in and submit the application for the Ed Wolsby? No. Okay. Uh, you could <laughs> don't wait for <laughs> don't wait for anything. Okay. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and go for it. Okay. Okay. The reason I, I was unsure, because the, the dollar amounts I think changed um before when I was looking at the Ed Wolsby uh uh you know assets and qualifications and stuff like that. So, and it also includes your spouse, is that correct? Well, let me let me answer the first part of it. Okay. You are correct. It did change, but it okay. changed in your favor. Okay. Right? So for total assets, it, it went from 6 million to 6.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the average of the salaries, it went from 350,000 to 400,000. Okay. For personal net worth, it went from 750,000 to 800,000. Mm -hmm. So it's actually increased and, and it improves your position as showing that you're economically disadvantaged. And yes, your spouse is, is included, okay. um, particularly if the assets are jointly held. Okay, when I was looking at it, what was unclear to me, which is why I didn't try to do the, um, the Ed Wolsby one was, it, it said something about you needed to select a scenario or give a scenario to how you qualify for it. 
And that is what threw me off because I'm like, okay, do I need to write something <laughs> indicating why I want to apply for this? Um, but now I understand it. I'm going to go back in and I'll take a look at it and, and move from there because I'm in the process of pending for the other one. I'm just going to actually apply for the Ed Wolsby one. All right. All right. So let me, let me um, remind you of the difference between the two, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of qualifications. I look at it this way. For Ed Wosby, you're submitting financial data. Yeah. Okay. For Wosby, you don't have to submit any financial data. Right. That's really the difference between the two. Okay. But remember what I said. If you qualify for Ed Wosby, which I think the majority of women do, mm -hmm. then you automatically are going to get certified for Wosby. So for me, I'd go ahead and put the work into getting Ed Wosby certified because I'm going to automatically get wolves be certified right yeah right so i've already done that is what the, the problem is <laughs> i've already put in for the the first one i am in the processing pending stage so, so now i'm going to go back and do the ed wolves yeah yeah, yeah yeah so okay. just upload so yeah just upload the financial information Oh, okay. okay. I, uh, maybe I didn't make that clear. Just oh, okay. Up, so all yeah, I yeah. just need to now just submit the financial information. Yeah, upload the financial, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. I will I will do just that. I had <laughs> one other question. Um, we get tons, of, I get tons of emails from people saying contract this, this contract, because I did receive the letter saying that I can now say that I am certified and I can submit for contracts. But I get so many emails from different people saying, oh, I can assist you with contracts. And I don't know which one's legit, which mm -hmm. one's not legit. So is there a way to figure out which, uh, you know, when someone contacts you to say, let me help you with contracts and do the bidding and capability statements, is there a way to, to verify that this email is legit rather uh, than, yeah. So I'll ask this. Okay. So do you have your? Do you have a good cape statement? Do you have a good capability statement? I, I I did create a capability statement, but I've never worked with contracts before. So so that to me is kind of uh, yes, I have a capability statement. All right. So <laughs> I believe it's great. <laughs> uh huh. Well, you know what? I think you should go on over there to the Women Business Center and have them take a I'm look. I'm going to do it. just that. Okay. You're going to have them take a look at that, right? Okay. And then in terms of these emails, I mean, work with the Women's Business Center because they may be able okay. to ferret out what I call the garbage from the real McCoys right. okay. Okay, for you to actually bid on. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, Marge. We, we, have, we have two more questions and then we have to wrap up. Okay. The okay. first one, Crystal, you want to ask your question? And then we'll go to Danielle in the chat. Yeah, I'll be really quick. Um, just... Um, I know probably a lot of women are already working a full-time plus, plus, plus job. Um, you mentioned the hours for McDonald's example. Um, are, is there a, a minimum amount of hours that we would have to or be required or whatever to put into the business? You know, I haven't, well, this is a Rod Johnson versus the SBA response. Okay, so, all right. I would probably show that I'm putting in um, at least six hours and that you're that, and that you're the one that's actually managing your business. Okay. That's what I would actually put in. So if you're working at eight to five at McDonald's and then you know you're working your business after that, then make sure that that's captured right in, in the resume. So I'll give and I'll give you a personal ex example. All right, so I do my SBA job from uh, what, from seven to three thirty. Okay, I take a half hour break, and then I work from actually four to um, typically four to ten thirty or eleven p.m. at night doing my annuity and business insurance business. That's that's what I do. So if I so if I were in your shoes, that's what I would put down from four to eleven p.m. I'm working my annuity and insurance business. And that, okay. So that hopefully that helps you. Sure. And of course I'm managing it, right? I'm managing and running it, doing all those other things. So that's what I would put in, in the resume. Gotcha. Okay. 
Okay, and last question, uh, Danielle, do you want to ask it or do you want us to read it out of the chat? It I can ask it. Give me one sec. I'm putting my, I'm having Thank issues you. with my video. So my apologies. Um, can you see me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I heard about something called um, the Women's Business Enterprise. Um, and it's through the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. Um, I've heard about their certification, but I'm kind of not quite sure what would be the benefits of the SBA certification opposed to this other certification. And if I went through the other certification, um, from what I saw in your presentation, it probably wouldn't get me approved for the SBA certification, but I, I just wanted to see if you had any knowledge on that. You know, the, well, I look at the SBA certification as a, as a validation, if you will, because now if, you, if you've noticed, the SBA has become the conduit for getting veterans because we just took over the program from the Veterans Administration to certify veterans and, save, and um, service disabled veterans. Women used to be able to self-certify at one time, well now, um, government agencies want, want at the SBA to be able to take women through a process to get certified so they know that it's, a, if you will, le legit, okay? Yeah. And then you have the 8A program. And so now it just seems like if you're SBA certified, it's kind of like the gold standard, okay, for, for contracting. Now the WBE, and maybe Marge, you you could maybe add something to that, but I can tell you that the certification from the SBA typically will will serve as that that qualifier that okay, you you're legitimate to be able to um, bid on these contracts. So you want to jump in, Marge, on the WBE? Well, I personally was a. Uh a women business enterprise national council certified i was one back 20 years ago and i was selling high-end hydrotherapy tubs and infrared saunas to hotels worldwide and no one bought any of my products so it was almost like a waste for me to go through that certification um when I didn't know that they wouldn't be buying it. You know, they told me, oh, go get this certification. You know, you'll you'll be able to go after all these things. For, but for what I was selling at the time, it, it wasn't worth it. And it was like going through worse than a tax audit, what what they what they were asking for. Just that's my personal experience. So I like, I didn't know about um, what Rod's saying about this program. You know, we're talking 20 years ago. So I would go through uh, the SBA before I would go through the WBENC. But maybe, uh, Danette, you can talk more on that. I would say as well, in what we are seeing in the market, the SBA certification is the leading certification in terms of this, um, in terms of women ownership. And um, we are also seeing a number of clients come in requesting even more information on how to have this uh, certification done. But this is what we are seeing as the, the leader in this field as well. If you have this certificate, I mean, I know that ideally, if you're uh, women owned, you go after government contracts, like with the DOD or something like that. But um, have you noticed private entities or, you know, companies regard this as well? So, all right. So what I've, what I have heard is, and I've heard it from a couple of companies now, if a female or a veteran have gone through the certification process with the SBA, then again, it, it, it seems like there's more legitimacy put to having that certification through the SBA, even in private industry, right? So, it's, it's almost like, well, the SBA is not going to just let anybody go through the program and get certified. So yeah. if they can get certified through the SBA, then they must be okay. And, you know, they can perform the work for us. Okay. Now, those were just comments that I've heard from a couple of private industry companies. 
And I'd like to say in terms of local government as well, I know that when we were processing grants and procurement, when I worked in local government, if somebody was SBA certified as women owned, uh, we did value those contracts. Mm -hmm. They don't, they have to fulfill, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, a certain percentage. Correct. A lot of local government agencies mm -hmm. now are looking to do that as well. And so you will see that um, on those city and county uh, procurement offices. Okay, Amanda, you got your question answered. There's no fee for the application, which is great. Yeah, okay. no fees. Yes, this is wonderful. So any other questions, anyone? I'll send the slide decks out to you. And uh, I want to thank again, uh, Rod, you've been wonderful working as a partner with the Greater Rockville Chamber of Commerce and uh, Danette with the Women, uh, Maryland Women Business Center. And just thank you both uh, very much for your partnership. And hopefully this was beneficial for you uh, that we're on today. So go get your SBA certifications. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Danette, we must... Um, I must get your contact information because yeah. I really promote the women business. I really do promote the women's business centers. I will definitely link with you after this, Rob. Okay. Thank you guys for the information. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure to meet you. Everyone. Annette, All I'm right. absolutely going to reach out to you. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye. good long weekend. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, Danette, send Dawn your 